بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Let's talk about some of the virtues of the uh, ayah and times when it is recommended to recite this ayah. One of its virtues that uh, is that it includes the greatest name of Allah. The greatest name, Ismullah al A'zam, as the Prophet ﷺ said, if Allah Azza wa Jal is asked by virtue of this name, He will honor whatever you ask Him. He will grant you. In the book of uh, Al Imam Ahmad, and it's classified as sound by Al Albani, Asma' bin Tusay, Zayd said that the Prophet ﷺ said, Ismullah al A'zam exists in two verses. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum ayatul kursi and the beginning of surah al imran alif lam mim Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum this is how the al imran starts so Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum as the prophet sallallahu said here is ismullah al azam it is a protection against Jinn, the devils. Uh, and the following narration is reported by Imam al Bukhari. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put me in charge of guarding the uh, zakatul fitr, the food that uh, is, uh, people bring so it will be distributed for. The, the, to the poor. So someone came to me and he started taking from that. So I caught him and he said, I will raise your matter to the Prophet ﷺ, to the Messenger of Allah. ﷺ. He said, Please, I am in need, I have children, and I really need this food. I'm in dire need. Uh, so I let him go. So when I uh, met the Prophet in the morning, he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Abu Raira, what happened to your hostage last night? The one that you, can, that you captured as a hostage. He called him hostage. He said, I said, Oh Messenger of Allah, he complained that he is in, in, in dire need and he had family, so I pitied him and I let him go. He said, he lied to you and he is going to come back. So that second night, he said, since the Prophet ﷺ told me he's coming back, so I was alert. So he came and started taking from the food. So I caught him and I said, I raise your issue to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. He said, please let me go. I have children. I'm in, a, in dire need. So again, I pitied him. I sympathized with him. And I let him go. So in the morning, I saw the Messenger وسلم, who asked him the same question. He said the same answer. He said he lied and he is going to come back again. So he said for the third time now, I kept myself uh, at alert, waiting for him to show up. So he came and he started taking from the food. So I grabbed him. I said, I will take you and raise your issue to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the last time, this is three times now, he said. Every time before you claim that you'll never come back and you kept coming back and you, didn't, you were not uh, truthful, in other words. He said, let go of me and I shall teach you words that Allah will benefit you by them. He said, what is it? What are these words? He said, when you go to bed, so this tells us when to recite it, when you go to sleep. So it's one of the adhkar of sleeping. He said, when you go to bed, iqra, recite, ayatul kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum, until you finish it. He said, if you do that, you will continue to be guarded by Allah Azza wa Jal and no devil will be able to come near you until you wake up in the morning. 
So I let him go. See, the companions were very keen on benefiting things with regards to their religion. So I let him go. And then in the morning, the Prophet ﷺ asked him what happened. And he told him the story. He said, indeed, he told you the truth, though he is a liar. Sadaqaka wa huwa kathub. He told you the truth, but he is a liar. He said, do you know with whom you were speaking for the past three nights, O Abu Huraira? He said, no. He said, you were talking to the devil. He said, ذَاكَ shaytan." That was the devil. So we know from this narration that it is a protection against the devils and the jinn, uh, the devils, and uh, we recite it before we go to sleep. Uh, Ubay ibn Ka'b said that a jinn came to him. In one of the narration it describes, and this is reported by uh, Al-Nasa'i and Al-Hakim and others, and it was classified as authentic by Albani. He described him to be having the, 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 the hand of a human and the hair of a dog or something like that. I, I really forget now the, the details of that, but it was uh, a weird combination of, of uh, uh, this description, different descriptions. So he told him, the jinn told him, uh, recite Ayatul Kursi. If you recite it in the morning, you will be protected from us, jinn, until uh, the evening. And if you re recite it in the evening, you will be protected from us until the morning. So now we know that it is from the adkar of the morning and the evening, and it's a protection from the jinn. One of the virtues of Surah Ayatul Kursi is that uh, it entitles the person to be admitted into Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Nasa'i, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, and narrated by Abu Umama. He والسلام, said, whoever recites Ayatul Kursi at the end of every Salah, nothing will prevent him from entering Jannah, except death. <clears throat> Meaning, <clears throat> except that he's not dead. He's still alive. Meaning, if you recite it at the end of every Salah, so that's another time, at the end of every Salah. After you finish Salah, you recite Ayat Al-Kursi of after any Salah you recite, uh, you pray. It will make you deserving of entering Jannah. The only thing preventing you from entering Jannah is death. You're not dead yet. When you die, you will be deserving, inshallah. It is a healing. Quran in general, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ للمؤمنين. And we send down of the Quran that which is a healing and mercy to, for the believers. That's the Qur'an in general. The greatest ayah in the Qur'an is Ayatul Kursi as per the saying of the Prophet ﷺ. So it is by greater reason that it will be a healing uh, to the believers. Now, something that is very, very important. After having mentioned the virtues of this or benefits of this uh, ayah. Uh, protects you against the devil, protects you against the jinn, it entitles you to this, it's a healing. Ibn al-Qayyim says, the slave will only benefit from reciting this verse, will only benefit if he recites it whilst reflecting on its meaning. And it's not someone who's Allahu la ilaha illa wa al-hayyu al-qayyum la ta'akhudhu wa sinatu wa la anamna wa s-salatu wa fil-ardu man dalla wa shahim dahu illa bi-nihi ala wa dihu wa akhir fuhu wa rahitun rahim. 
talking to people, looking at the computer, looking at the mobile phone, looking outside. Where's your mind? Be focused. You want to benefit? Be focused. Think about what you're saying. So he said, the slave will only benefit from this if he recites it whilst reflecting and pondering upon its, uh, its meaning. This is the end of the uh, benefits of, sur of Ayatul Kursi and some of the timings it is recommended for us to recite it. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to uh, make us amongst those who actually think about it because actually it really is the greatest verse. When, when, when I was preparing this, this lesson for this past week, I said, SubhanAllah, no wonder it is the greatest verse. It holds so many meanings and it, it reminds us, because we're heedless, it reminds us with this great creator that we're worshiping. Makes you thrilled that you're a slave to Allah. It really does. It makes you happy that you're a slave of such a great ilah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us. Allahumma ameen. Subhanakallahu alhamdulillah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaha.